Hmm, look at this. A lovely little mess. Wonder who created that, huh? Probably this guy right here. Get out of there! Yeah, I got you, didn't I, dude? Scared the you know what right out of him. You deserve it, you little stinker. Yeah! <laughs> what up, y'all? Welcome back to another one. This dude here, I'm telling you right now. Thank goodness uh, I listened to y'all down in the comments. I bought one of these guys it's called a whistle and it's connected to my phone it's an app it lets me gps track frederick when he gets out of this backyard it's really neat but anyways uh he literally got out this morning when i was gone beth my wife was like bobby where's fred look at your phone where's he at sure enough he was down the block i uh, guided her right to where he was bam thank you all for the suggestions down in the comment because old frederick look at him he knows he knows he's in trouble, Frederick. Hey, yeah, you. We're talking about you, dude. Teenagers, dude. Little teenagers who think they gotta chase girls around. That's your problem, man. That is your problem. I know. He's he, he's guilty. You can see it in his eyes. But again, thank you guys for your suggestions on the uh, on the whistle little dog collar unit. It connects to my phone. I love it. Uh, it is already a lifesaver for old Frederick. But as you can tell. We got some snow on the ground. Uh, the last hunt we did was with another YouTube channel that I had in, and it was a blizzard. It was sleeting, it was misting, freezing rain, and my decoys got wrecked. I mean, absolutely wrecked. Everything in the old trailer that got used during that hunt. Hey, quiet! My decoys got wrecked. Check it out. Look at my snow goose silhouettes. Completely frozen. Any decoys that I use, look at my socks, completely just iced over and frozen. So today's video, I'm literally taking all the decoys that I used. Hey, shh, quiet. I'm trying to work over here. I'm taking them in the shop. Oh goodness, yeah. The door, the ramp's still frozen too. I'm taking, oh geez. I'm taking them in the shop and drying them out one by one, especially all my dark decoys. I'm not really gonna worry about my white decoys, but I got another YouTuber coming in town, a giant YouTuber. I can guarantee you probably 80% of you guys right now that are watching know what YouTuber I'm talking about. Now you guys have to stay tuned. Like I said, we already had one YouTube channel come in and collab. Those videos will start probably tomorrow. Another YouTuber coming in and you guys really know this guy. Yes, this guy. So you gotta stay tuned. That's what I'm doing today. I'm getting all my decoys dried back out so we can hunt tomorrow. He will be in town tonight. So let's go in the shop and I'll show you what all I got going on in there. I'll tell you, it's, it's a disaster. But today, um, while we dry out some decoys, while we talk about the uh, collaborations that have already happened and that are to come, I'm going to give you guys some decoy spread tips. My go-to goose spread tips, whether it's honkers, lessers, he's using an A-frame, we're gonna go through those. Real quick before we get started with the goose spread tips and the drying of the decoys inside, I got a big fire going on in the shop. We're fighting nice, not only in the decoys, but with the pigeons too. Check out their water. Their water. Their water's completely capped over. That's not good. But the pigeons, oh, he just pooped. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, the pigeons are doing great. Um, they got these little cubby holes right here that they get in to keep out of the cold and plus I blocked the walls off pretty good for them but they're fat they're eating a bunch I mean a ton they are getting tubby man as far as our new little baby goes check him out he's gonna be a red auburn and with some white wing tips he is gonna be a stud muffin of a bird you guys have been asking for some pigeon loft updates and uh, you know the pigeon loft kind of is what it is. It doesn't get too crazy. I think the most exciting thing that happens is we have a new baby on the ground and this baby is our first Auburn. It'll be really neat to see uh, how he comes out looking. He's gonna be gorgeous, I can guarantee it. We still need to get bands on his legs though. But here we go, this is the mixture we're using now for pigeon food. Let's see, we get a little bit of corn in there. We we'll put a lot of wheat in there. Yeah, that looks good. Let me come over here and get a little bit of beans. Fill it up with beans. And there we go. That is it. All right, watch out now. Watch out. Coming in. We're coming through. Watch it now. Look, they're hungry. You guys ready to eat, huh? Huh? Ready? 
you go. There you go. There you go. The old pigeons. They're doing good. They're doing real good. Gonna have to get a, a water bowl heater though. Not only for the pigeons, but for the dogs too. I've been saying that for too long. Oh, but this is the strategy now. Just taking decoys and chucking them on the ground so they'll dry out. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun. My whole shop's just going to be completely soaking wet by the end of the day. But this is the only way that I found how I can dry decoys out. It's, it's not fun. It's not fun. It makes me never want to use my decoys in wet weather again. Cold wet weather. Because this happens every single time. Honestly, this is this is a pain in the butt. Like, I didn't even think about it. I was like, yeah, blizzard. Yep, we're gonna kill some birds. Every time, I forget that this happens to my socks every single time. Now we do have probably three or four bags of Canada Silhouettes that we gotta do this with too today. So, hopefully I can get them all dried out before tomorrow. Uh, well, we added to it. We got all the Canada socks out here now. We got two bags of Silos is all that's needed. That's the only two bags, thank goodness, that I used of my Canada Silhouettes. So, no, oh, I'd say we got a good, I don't know, 50, 40 dozen maybe, 30 dozen decoys here. 30, 40 dozen that we have to thaw out. There's another probably 20, probably 20, 30 dozen out in the trailer. Actually, another 50 dozen probably that needs to be thawed out, but... These are the ones that we really need today. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to sit down and I'm gonna give you guys, like I said, my go-to tips for goose spreads. My go-to spreads. I actually got this idea from one of y'all yesterday and down in the comment section, you're like, Bob, I'm struggling with new ideas for my goose spread. Can you please give me your top tips, your top spreads, your best ideas on a whiteboard, which I have a big white piece of paper a few of them, uh, but we're gonna get it done today and I'm gonna give you guys my go-to spreads. So first off, we're gonna start with the main ones that a lot of you guys hunt and that is the honkers. This is gonna be a field decoy spread for honkers. Now, let's say the wind is coming this way to our backs. We're looking this way. Let's say we're out of the spread uh, in a laydown blind. I'm sorry, in a A-frame blind right here, wind again is this way, so the birds are going to be coming in like this to us. Now, this hole here, everything behind us here could be a tree row or a fence line or whatever, but out here is where we're going to put our decoy spread, right? Now, before we get into it, guys, there's a big difference in how I set a honker spread and a lesser spread. You know what I mean? There's a big difference how I set a lesser spread and a snow goose spread. You know what I mean? But for honkers, first and foremost, always try to have the wind at your back. You want them birds to be coming up in your face like this. For most honkers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a mild horseshoe. That is what I love to do on bigger birds. Now, a lot of times, these edges, like this edge here and this edge here, these corners, are going to be a lot thicker than what's going to be in the middle of us in front of us so these are going to be real thick real thick real thick it's going to loosen up in here a lot so this is where we're going to want them to land this side's thick this side's thick basically because we want to use it as a channel to, to channel them big hunkers right up in there to land right here the kill hole now it doesn't matter how many decoys you have for that spread whether you have five dozen or 25 dozen, that spread right there is what I've always used for honkers. Now, again, it doesn't matter what type of blind you're in, whether it's, you know, lay down blinds, it doesn't matter. But this spread here, I have got it done the most with. I mean, even for lessers and cacklers, that spread for a lot of years got it done. A lot of times uh, back in the day, this was just a full body spread, full body situation, but now, that spread will get it done for anything. You can use, you know, regular Canada Goose silhouettes and do that spread right there and kill them all day. The honkers. Now, lessers. Let's do a lesser spread with us uh, also sitting out of the spread, at the back of the spread. This is my go-to small geese, lessers, cacklers, out of the spread. You know what I'm saying? Laying out of the spread, not laying in the decoys. I stress that because Sometimes you can get away with laying in the decoys. You have to have some tricks up your sleeve for that. If you guys want me to do a 
video on how to land the decoys correctly. There's some uh, ghillie blankets out there. There's some lay down chair chairs out there. There is some 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 tricks that allow you to lay in the decoys better, like underneath socks. You all see me do it in white. But we're gonna do as if we were in lay down blinds and or a frames out of the spread because that is what most people do. So on this one, my lesser, so this is for lessers and cacklers, same thing pretty much. You know what I'm saying? My R is not a good R there. I'm not the best rider, so my, <laughs> don't mind me. Uh, a lot of times I'm gonna do this, guys. Big oval with a little, maybe a little peninsula here. Now, mind you, this is the shape of the spread, and a lot of times we're going to be in an A-frame right behind it. So this distance right here is always going to be no less than 10 to 15 yards. You never want to be closer than 10 to 15 yards to your spread if you're laying out of it, if you're sitting out of it, you know what I mean? Now, again, the wind is at our back going this way, but lessers, this is going to be just bunched up real thick, real thick. Now on the this end and on this end, a lot of you guys have seen in the videos, I always thicken it up yet again. I like to thicken up each side really thick, really thick, and then again loosen it up in here a little bit to give them a landing spot. Now this little peninsula, I usually take my silhouettes and I just make a peninsula going out. So it gives them this side as an option or this side as an option. But again, the big body of the spread is gonna be a big oval and it's gonna be pretty tight. You don't need five foot between the decoys. Lessers, especially when it gets cold, they sit really tight in a, in a circle, in an oval, it's just really tight. But I like to do an oval because we can get it really wide. You know what I mean? Really, really, really wide. That way when they're coming at you into the wind like this, they got a bunch to look at. And when I set my spread like this, those mojo goose flags, I'll just spread them out through the spread, left to right, like so. Just brrrr. And with, again, the spread being wide and then some motion through it, you can just see their heads working back and forth as they're coming to that wide spread. You know what I mean? So again, lessers, they sit tight in the fields. They're not like honkers. They're small birds. They sit really tight. So having family groups and all this stuff, I don't do that with lessers. You want your spread tight and wide. Remember, always try to put the wind at your back. If you can't, you can sidewind them. And if you have to sidewind, it is a little different spread. That's for sure. If you guys want to see that on another video, we can do it. But today I just want to attack this style of hunting with different species. Now, I'm not gonna lie, guys. My lesser spreads, uh, I do silhouettes, and I do socks mixed through, and I have to say on my lesser spreads, they're gonna be between 50 to probably 70 dozen decoys. Yes, it seems like a bunch. But for lessers, it's necessary. You have to have a massive spread. It's gotta be nice and tight, and it's gotta be thick to intrigue all them eyes because lessers come in big groups. I mean, you can have a group of 100, 200, 300 pretty darn easily. <laughs> Look, Fred's like, I'm out of here, I'm done. But that's why I have all these decoys, my lesser spreads, you know, whether we're sitting in white underneath the decoys with the dark decoys up front at our feet, it always takes a bunch with the small birds, I'm telling you. Now guys, these two spreads, whether it's the U-shaped honker spread, which you can get away with anywhere from five dozen to 25 dozen, or whether it's the lesser spread, I would urge you guys to always pay attention to what type of birds you're gonna be hunting. When you find a feed of birds, know what's in there. Get out your binoculars, try to find out what exact species in there and what's most abundant. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how you want to call the birds. That's how you want to set up your spread for the birds. You know what I mean? Honkers, they don't like to sit tight all the time. They're in families, and then families like to get away from one another and create room. Just like with honker calling, you know, yeah, I know, I sound great, right? That's a honker call. Now a lesser call, it's, you know, a lot of you guys uh, that are great honker callers. Maybe you've never hunted lessers. Maybe you've never blown a lesser call, but they are way, way, way different. And the setup of the decoy spreads, the sound that you're going to be providing, it's all species specific. You know what I mean? <sighs> well, now that we got that done, 
I, uh, I don't want to give you guys too much information with like laying in white and doing all this other jazz using decoys that a lot of you don't even have. You know what I mean? I want to keep this video, this first goose spread video that we're doing, I want to keep it as relatable as possible. Now, if there are a lot of you out there that are going to be hunting snows or you want to really, you do want to learn how to lay in white, I'm telling you right now, it does take a lot of decoys to lay in the spread uh, without, you know, lay down blinds, just to lay in it with, in a white painter suit or lay under dark decoys without lay on blinds, you know, in like a bean field or a wheat field, it takes a bunch of decoys to hide guys. But those two spreads right there, I'm telling you, I've had some of my best hunts with those two spreads. If you use those two spreads, I promise you, you're gonna kill them. One of the biggest things to always remember, I think I've said it, I think this is gonna be the third time in this video, is wind, wind, wind. Know where your wind's coming from. Know which direction, try to put it over a shoulder or straight at your back you know what i'm saying knowing that will provide birds to give it up the best that they can you know what i mean <laughs> if that makes any sense having the wind at your back is going to allow birds to decoy the best for you to have the best shot possible geese ducks pigeons birds in general they all land into the wind y'all it's vital to always keep that in mind every single morning you're sitting up your spread always know the wind know if the wind's gonna move and if it is gonna move be prepared for that because you're gonna have to adjust the spread but look at this guy he's just made himself right at home here he's got a fire he's got his decoys what else could a dog want <laughs> Brad what are you doing man huh what are you? he says dad leave me alone I was warm right there buddy you're just a sweet dude i'm so proud of you look at him look at that face how couldn't you just how can't you just love that sweet face look at that guy right there hi freddy rico hi buddy well just got done editing this video up i really hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did drop a comment down below and let me know what else you guys want me to do for you. What other spreads? Maybe some duck floater spreads on water, right? Maybe some white decoy spreads on how to lay in white painter suits. You guys got to drop the comments down below. You guys have to let me know, y'all. But if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And hit that little notification bell down there because it will notify when your boy uploads right on your mobile device, y'all. Be sure to check out everything at duckswaterfowl.com because every time you guys pick up something, you guys know the drill, you guys know it. It goes directly to helping me bring you guys more of these videos. But please guys, let me know what you guys want to see, whether it's a certain hunt, maybe some rabbit hunting, maybe some squirrel hunting, maybe some coyote trapping and hunting, and maybe just some more goose spread ideas and tip videos. Please let me know down below because I want to crank them out during this Christmas break. I hope you all have a lovely holiday season coming at you here. Merry Christmas to y'all, but we will see y'all on the next one. Peace!